question than that how question. My question is why? I understand how. I know you got a thick skin. You're not one of those people that's afflicted with the need to be loved by strangers. I get that. I think that's true. My question is not how do you do it. My question is why do you do it? Why do you, let's face it. I mean, you're a billionaire. You got a great family. You're, you're a very dedicated father. People may not see this in you a lot because you keep that kind of private. But my question to you is why do you subject yourself to this? So there's a movement in this country. It's called MAGA. And Biden's always fighting it. We will stop MAGA. MAGA is make America great again. And we were doing, you know, I had an administration that was a tremendous success, even enemies. I mean, we had the greatest economy in history. We had the best job numbers in history. That's why I'm doing so well with the black and Hispanic vote. They had the best job numbers they've ever had. We were doing things that were incredible. And I was going through Russia, Russia, Russia hoax. I was going through the impeachment stuff, you know, all of that. And, you know, in one way, I, I jokingly said, somebody said, can you imagine what he could have done? Because I had one of the most successful presidencies. And yet I was constantly fighting off the radical left lunatics. They are deranged. They're, they are. It's like a derangement syndrome. But I actually said, you know, maybe in some ways I did better because I showed something. But maybe if I had too much time on my hands, it would have gone too far. And the administration wouldn't have been as successful as it was. When you look at our job numbers, I rebuilt the military, largest tax cuts ever. Largest tax cuts, bigger than the Reagan tax cuts. But higher Largest revenue. regulation cuts ever. I'm staying with my why question, because look at this. Everybody calls it inflation, but affordability. When we talk about gasoline under your administration, average 257 a gallon. Under Biden, 361, 40% more. Un under your administration, homes, average uh, $320,000. Under the Biden administration, 31% more, $420,000. Under your administration, interest rates, 3.8 average. Under the Biden administration, 39% more at 5.3%. Okay, now let's look at the border. Uh, under you, average 1.7 million border crossings. Their official number is 6.4. Wow. That's from Homeland Security. It's actually about 13 million. Because I know I've been to the border. I've talked to the border guards down there, Brandon Judd. I've talked to uh, Jason Jones. I've talked to the people that actually know the numbers. They say it's between 10 and 13 million. So my point is, when you look at the actual numbers, plus the things you just talked about, lower taxes, higher tax revenue, you look at that and you would say, my God, he should be running unopposed. I mean, why? why, why? And these numbers, I just, I appreciate it, but... And these numbers are, are really, I don't know who made them. Very conservative. As, as an example, I had gasoline down to $1.87, not two right. fifty seven. It's now almost at $4. It's going to be at $5 very short. Right. It's going way up. I took very conservative yeah. numbers so people couldn't well, argue Well, interest with rates, I was at 2.6%. They have 38 And now they're at 9%, 10%. You can't get money. So, you know, we did a great job. We did a great job. Okay, so here's the question. Most people look at this from the standpoint of, they asked themselves the question, is my life better under this administration or is it better under this administration? My quality of life, my ability to pay for my children's lunches, tennis shoes, getting them to the dentist, getting all of the different things that go to quality of life. And when we look at that, it's not even a close call. Right. So why are people so energized against President Donald J. Trump? Well, I think it's... Uh, to a certain extent, it's habit, not necessarily against me. I think Democrats vote out of habit. I'll give you an example. I was the best president for Israel ever. Golan Heights, uh, all of the things I did for Israel, and yet uh, I get less than 50% of the votes. It's shocking to me. And Biden's a disaster, and Obama was a disaster for Israel with the Iran nuclear deal that he approved, all the, you know, which was basically a path toward nuclear weapons. And I say, why? And I say, it's habit. Uh, they're used to voting for Democrats. Uh, black people are used to voting for Democrats, but they're coming off it. They're smart. They're seeing what's happened. They're seeing criminal justice reform. They're seeing the black colleges and universities. I got it funded. They're seeing all of the things that I, I've done. Nobody could do what I did. I say that, and people sometimes smile, but it's actually true. I'm the best president for black people since Abraham Lincoln. And people, black people are seeing that. 
And we have numbers now that, as a Republican, I don't think anybody's ever had. Well, I hope they come out and vote for me. I was just in uh, Jerusalem and interviewed Prime Minister Netanyahu. Yeah. He said that the Abraham Accords, yeah. which y y you achieved, um, he said it, he didn't have the words to describe what it presented for Israel in terms of security, in terms of the ability to bring about uh, peace and stability to that region. It's very nice, by the way, that you say that. And by the way, great for the Arab community also. Of it course. was great for both. Yeah, and, and they're working so well. The only problem is we had four countries signed, real leaders. I would have had everybody signed up. I would have had Iran signed up. People laugh when I say that. Iran was broke. I said, anybody buys from Iran, you can't do business with the U.S. Iran was broke. They were down to almost no money. They had no money to fund Hamas or Hezbollah. They had no money. They were broke. They would have made a deal within a week after the election. That result was very dangerous for our country. But uh, we did great things, and I think that's what people see. People want to go back to where we were. You had high-level appointee positions that you didn't fill. Right. And, and thousands more mid-level positions that you didn't fill and generated over $4 trillion dollars in tax revenue for the first time ever right. with tax cuts, lower tax rates, higher tax it revenues. brought business into the country. So why are people so energized against you? Are you getting out messaged? I think, no, I really believe it's a hundred years. As an example, with African Americans for a hundred years, the Democrats have run the cities, a hundred years. I used to say 50, they said, you're wrong. I said, you have to be kidding, it's a hundred years. It's a habit. It, they get used to it. But they're learning that habit's being broken in a lot of different ways. Uh, I also think you have a fake news that doesn't report it the way they should be reporting it. Look, the news has been proven to be totally fake. And it's 95% on the other side. That's the thing I don't understand. Why would they? Why do people want open borders where millions of people have come into our country? And you see what's happening to the crime rate. You know... A stat came out the other day that's scary. In Venezuela, Caracas, different cities, they've moved many of these criminals out into the United States and now happily in a location near you, right near your house. Yeah. Venezuela, the Congo, they're empty in the prisons. In the Congo, we have many, many people coming out of the prisons of the Congo. But the prison populations are way down all over the world. Nobody wants to talk about it. Prison population and mental institution, something you deal with a lot. You know more about a mental institution than I do. That's your world. It's what you do better than anybody as far as I'm concerned. You know the population of mental institutions is way down because they've moved a lot of the most seriously ill people into our country. And Venezuela just announced that they're 72% down in crime from two years ago. Think of that. Because they moved there. I mean, you don't have to be a genius to realize they moved there their prisoners out, but they move their gangs. All the gang members are now in the United States, happily living in the United States. The United States of America has become a dumping ground because of a very uh, mentally deficient president. And it's not him. I don't believe it's him. I do think he knows what's going on. I think he's sort of an evil guy, but he's not at the top of his game, and he never was very good at it. If you look at his foreign policy for years and years and years, you look at how bad he was on the crime bill in the 1990s, how he's been bad at everything, and he got lucky. Look, he ran three or four times when he would be, let's say, in normal shape, in good shape. He failed. He got it when he shouldn't be here. He shouldn't be here. And he's dealing with President Xi, who I know very well, and he's dealing with Putin, who I know very well, and he's dealing with all of these leaders of these countries that doesn't, they don't like the United States, they don't like what it represents, and they are at the top of their game. They are vicious, they love their country, or they want success, what, you know, you define it any way you want. We've become a failing nation, we're a nation that's in tremendous trouble. Uh, we have months to go, you know, we're, we have somebody negotiating for us and dealing for us who is not up to par, He's not, and I'm not even saying now, I think 25 years ago he wasn't up to par, but he's dealing with 
President Xi of China. He's dealing with President Putin of Russia. He's dealing with Kim Jong-un of North Korea. He's dealing with very tough people that, that really are at the top of their game. I know them all. I know many more than that.